It's time for the Margin Matters Minute with Money Man Jason Brown. All right, Jason Brown, welcome back to another edition of the Margin Matters Minute. I am so excited today to have the authors of the new book, The Debt Slayers, how it's a, actually a quick guide for slaying debt and living a more fulfilling life. Uh, Mr. Tim and Leanne Norris, husband and wife, uh, co-authored this book. Um, and as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner here, I want to point this out. That it says that they slayed $429,000 down to zero. Now, even I can do that kind of simple math because I think, Tim, I think you mentioned before that you guys had knocked this out in about four years, right? So even I could do that kind of simple math, 400,000 divided by four equals $100,000 of debt you guys crushed each year on average, which is absolutely astonishing. And I know a lot of people would probably be very curious to hear your story about this. So Tim and Leanne, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah, Jason, thank you. We appreciate the opportunity to give a little bit more about our story. Awesome. Now, now, guys, I want to make sure, now I know, Tim, we talked before, um, I want to make sure that people know, because when they hear or see this, this here, the first thing they're going to think is, oh, well, you know, they must have won the lottery or <laughs> they must have gotten a large inheritance from a wealthy family member that passed away. So of course they, it's easy to do that when you, you know, someone leaves you in a state or now let's clear that up from the beginning before we get into the question. So this is not the case, right? No, not at all. Nothing. <laughs> no lottery, no lottery winners. No lottery. Yeah. So Jason, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because that is a common rebuttal we get. Okay. You, you must be trust fund babies. You know, you got a large settlement along the way, but none of that happened. It was, it, it took hard work getting on a plan, sticking with it till the end and knocking out the debt aggressively. Yeah, right. Or the, yeah, you mentioned the settlement. That would be another thing. Oh, they must have won a big lawsuit. That would be another thing. Yeah. So no, no lottery winnings, no lawsuit winnings, no inheritance. You guys did this, you know, the, the hard work way. So we're going to jump right into it. Um, and, and whoever wants to, I'll ask the question, whoever wants to answer, that's fine. Um, and let you guys have equal time. I don't want to have any marriage quarrels here. <laughs> so we so, um, learned a lot. What's that? I said, we actually learned a lot from this debt-free journey. I, so. I would think so. Yeah, I would think so. We're and writing a book tight, together. We're tight with our marriage as a result. <laughs> <laughs> so <Very> no, <laughs> So the first question I have is, in our society and culture today, most Americans just feel that debt is a part of life, right? I mean, you're always gonna have a car loan, you're always gonna have a mortgage, you're always gonna have student loan debt. I know people that took out $10,000 of student loan debt 30 years ago and haven't made one payment on it, right? They, it just debt's just a way of life, debt's a part of life. Now, what was the trigger? What was the moment, the defining moment that when you guys woke up one day and, and you're staring at $429,000 of debt, what was it that, was there a moment? Was there a specific moment that like the light bulb went on and said, you know what? Like, we're, we're gonna knock this debt out. What, was there a specific time or moment that that happened? Yeah, so Tim and I have different moments. So I'll speak first about mine. And so for me, I actually honestly always hated debt and hated that the fact that I even had to take out that amount of um, student loans for school. And so I always knew that I would be very intentional about paying off my student loans. And um, typically on about a seven to 10 year repayment plan was my goal. But the moment for me was when I made my first few payments and realized how much interest I was going to be paying a month and that I had taken out this amount of money, but by the end of 10 years, it was going to be even more that I would have to pay back the lender. And so already being frustrated with my situation, there was just no way that I was going to, um, to do that for 10 years and end up paying so much more money than I even borrowed to begin with. So that was my moment, just the shocking um, fact that the interest compounds so dramatically on loans. 
That's it. In my moment. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah. And my moment was the moment. <laughs> because you, you often hear stories of that pivotal moment that's what happened to me i had a pivotal moment all these life events had happened to me all at once uh, i had just graduated from graduate school i had just married my best friend um i was in the labor market mm -hmm. and could not find a job and here I was after all these years accumulating all this debt, what was close to 350,000 collectively at the time, trying to start a family, trying to build a career. And I could not do that without money. So over the four month period of me knocking on every Fortune 500 company in America's door, trying to get a job and they would not hire me uh, because I, I lacked experience. I spent most of my life in school, like most recent graduates. Um, I was crushed and I felt helpless. And to the point where I never wanted to feel that again. I mean, depression, um, emasculated, every, every negative feeling under the sun is what I felt. And it really pressed me into a diamond in terms of the way I looked at money at that point and that was the pivotal moment where i said i need to get rid of this debt that's uh you hit on a lot of really good points tim is is as money is so emotional and it creates so much anxiety and stress that people may not even realize uh, you know what it does to your health and what you just said is exactly uh what i try to tell people is like you know what um you know you shouldn't think that debt's a way of life because you don't realize what it's doing to your health and you know, it, 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 you're just carrying all this, this baggage, if you will. Right. And, and there's no need to. So, you know, that's, that's such a great story, Tim, of, of sharing, you know, what it, what it did to you. And I want to get back to what Leanne said too, about the interest rate, the compounding interest. And what I thought of when you were telling that story, Leanne was, was when you buy a house, right? Mm -hmm. um, when you buy a house, let's say you get a 30 year loan, uh, and, and you say, Oh, I just bought this house for $200,000. I got a great deal. But then when you actually look at 30 years of the interest that you're paying, it's usually about twice. Yeah. You're going to say, okay, I bought the house for 200,000, but when I pay off the loan, oh, I actually paid over 400,000 or whatever it is. And that's something that I don't think people really look at is, is the, like you said, the compounding interest over the years, it, it, you're going to be paying so much more money. And when you get into that, you know, any kind of debt, um, no matter the amount, it, it's if you're paying the minimums, you're never going to get out of it ever. Mm -hmm. So that's why if for me, when I was in all this credit card debt, um, the only way for me to pay it off was to cut up the credit cards, stop using them. That was the only chance I had to pay off the, the credit cards was just to stop using them and, and, and then, you know, have a chance to pay it down. So those are very excellent uh, uh, points there by both of you. So let's go and we'll jump into the next question. And this is one of my, I'm really curious to hear. Um, was there any, you guys went on this, this unbelievable journey of paying off this debt and you, you made major sacrifices, lifestyle changes, uh, all kinds of things that are, that are um, you guys talk about, you're chronicled in the book. Um, but what I'm curious about was what was maybe the biggest challenge or the biggest hurdle or, or maybe like a roadblock that you guys hit to and, and maybe you just got, you hit a wall and you said, you know what, like, you know, we've, we've paid off half the debt. We've, we've done more than anyone would have even possibly met. We paid off $200,000. We, we knocked this up. No one else would have even come close to this. So what, what, were, what were some of those moments where you were just like, you know what, this, this, I don't know if we can do this. Like, what do you guys yeah. think? So I, I can speak for the both of us on, at least the overarching one. And we had, we did, like you said, had many points throughout our journey where we hit a brick wall. We were just like, what do we do from here? But the main thing that sort of sticks out in terms of a single challenge for us collectively would be having to say no. Uh, what mm -hmm. seemed like all the time to our friends, family, and opportunities that will pop up. I mean, if you can imagine mm -hmm. you know, saying no over a four year time horizon, it starts to do something to you. And, and I knew personally, um, I can't speak for Leanne 
on this one, but I knew that some of my relationships would not be as strong as they once were uh, following through this journey because we just could not afford to spend as much time uh, or financially those opportunities um, because we were getting out of debt. So that was very tough for me. And I feel like now I'm rebuilding those relationships, not because I have more money, it's because I have the opportunity to do so. Um, and my focus is not getting out of debt. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think one of us, one scenario that I can think of that was major for us, and it was actually early, pretty early on in our marriage, I was planning a couple's trip to Dubai. And I really, really wanted to go because it was one of my best friends and her husband. And um, I, Tim <laughs> did not, he was basically just like, we don't have the money. And I'm like, we do have the money, but technically that money should have been, you know, spent for our debt. Ultimately, we did end up going, but um, I, we, I did try to go as cost efficient as possible. I will say that, but we did end up going. So um, it was just a whole battle of really consciously choosing to make sacrifices. Um, that was really difficult for us. Some time periods, it was easier than others. Um, as Tim said, there, I'm sure a lot of our college friends probably thought we had just got like married and boring all of a sudden <laughs> because we often had to say no to a lot of things, but it wasn't bad. It was just that we were choosing, um, consciously choosing and making sacrifices with our money and um, deciding what we could and couldn't do. And so it was up and down roadblocks for us making those decisions because there are times when that is really hard and there's things that you really want to participate in and you just have to weigh is this worth being set back on the debt-free journey or you know how is it going to affect our future um, when making those decisions. Very good. And Tim, speaking of saying no to things or, or saying no to big purchases or trips or or whatever it may be. I think, Tim, I think you mentioned in the book your your dream of... Don't bring uh, it up, Jason. Don't bring it up. Don't bring it up. No, that's a good story. Like, your dream of, of owning a Tesla, right? And, and you want to tell... You, you put that on hold. You made a decision, right? So you want to share that little story real quick? Yeah, certainly. Tesla? Like Leanne mentioned, part of our journey consisted of making tough decisions along the way to become debt-free, which would ultimately propel us financially in the future. And one of those sacrifices that we made was deciding not to buy a Tesla. So, and I talk about it in the book. Yeah. I had studied not only the vehicle, but the company, a uh, classmate of mine, and myself, we wrote a, a business strategy paper on the strategy for, for Tesla and the great things they were doing from an automobile standpoint. And actually it was, we got an A plus on it. And later I got a call two years after graduating that they wanted to put our paper in a, a essay challenge. So it was a really good paper. Obviously I say all that because I had a lot of emotions and time invested in Tesla, the brand itself, and it was tough turning down, saying no to buying that Tesla and buying a, a Nissan Leaf instead <laughs> in so many ways I can't describe, but looking back on it, it was one of the greatest financial decisions we made, avoiding additional 30 grand to right. our, our debt. Right. Now, Tim, you know, you still have a lot of life to live. So, you know, you still would like, would, would you like to one day maybe buy a Tesla? Is that still maybe a long-term goal? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Well, that's okay. I mean, <laughs> kind of, you just deferred, you just kind of, you know, put it, put it back. I mean, and that's okay. And, and I will share, uh, I have a, I, I guess I call him a, a financial mentor that, that I, uh, that I have in my life. And, and one of the best advice that he told me is that you learn, you have to learn how to say no without guilt and that's kind of what you guys are talking about you have to learn how to say no without guilt to anything and and that's the hardest part it's, it's kind of easy sometimes to say no but the guilt part mm -hmm. like all your friends are going out to dinner and hey come out with us and well you're like well if I go out to dinner I'm probably gonna end up spending a hundred dollars on one meal 
uh, or I could, that's a week's worth of groceries for me, or, or that's a hundred dollars toward the debt. So you have, you have to make those decisions. And, and you know, you guys uh, obviously made a lot of right decisions for, for a long time to be able to knock this debt out, uh, which is tremendous. Now, the next question I, I'm very curious about, uh, and I, I know Tim knows the exact date and Leanne, maybe you do too the exact date that you guys paid off your last, I guess your last pay, debt payment was a student loan payment. Yes. Was it on your birthday, Tim? Or tell, tell us the, the yeah, that's it, it was, it was my birthday, December 3rd, 2018. Okay. That's when we can com, uh, concluded our journey. And that's when you guys came, became completely debt free. Yes. Completely so debt -free. Okay. So 2018. So it was about three years ago, I guess. So, so, okay, so you have a little bit of time to reflect now. You're, so the question is, how has your life changed, right? So what, what is different now? Like now that you guys have had a little bit of breathing room now um, to, to kind of reflect and, and, and think about, uh, so, so what's changed? Like lifestyle change or mindset change? To share a little bit about it. We have been liberated from the burden of debt. That in itself has been life changing. <laughs> no more going to sleep thinking about what bills you have to pay, what lenders you owe, and okay. how are you going to be gain your freedom back. Mm -hmm. So that in itself has been remarkable. Something that we will never miss worrying about <laughs> that. And we just really appreciate that state of being. Um, like you mentioned there's certainly been some lifestyle, lifestyle changes that have been a noticeable difference as well. Now we're able to back our goals with more money. Mm -hmm. We're able to allocate our money differently to help us excel at our goals. For example, you know, we have goals, fitness goals, to be healthy, mm -hmm. to work out more. Now we're able to eat better products. Right. A little bit more, we, put more money into our, our food budget. So mm -hmm. now we, we buy healthier organic products that have right. less sodium, that are more natural, um, less bad ingredients in them. And that, that helps us feel better. It helps us attain our, our fitness goals. In addition to, you know, wanting to retirement early, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, wanting to retire early. Right. You know, we're able to put more money in investing that will help us get there. So. Ultimately, we're taking that money that we would allocate towards debt, towards more of our goals in helping propel us forward faster. Yeah, I definitely agree with everything Tim said. I think the only thing that I would add is just that at heart, Tim is still minimalist. I'm still pretty frugal. And so we're not just frivolously spending. We still have, you know, a pretty detailed budget. But within that budget, we're able to allocate um, more money to areas that align with our lifestyle and our goals. Um, and so that's what's made the, the biggest difference for us. Yeah, that's what I was curious about, because I think some people think that, you know, once you, okay, you paid off the debt now. So now it's like, okay, it's time to go hog wild, go spend. Yeah. And I don't think that's the case because you guys have, over a course of time, it, it's behavior modification, right? You guys have changed your mindset and your behavior that it's not just going to be like a, a light switch and you're just going to switch it back to, okay, well, let's go you know, buy, you know, new cars and boats and houses. No, you're just like, hey, Let's just keep on this same path. And now um, you can build, you know, your savings up, your, your emergency fund, your, all, whatever, your, your retirement investments. And, and now you can really start building wealth. And, and one thing that, that's kind of been, I guess, told to me or, or exhibited to me is, is when you're out of debt, you have more options in life, right? You, it's e like what you guys were just saying, it, you have, it, it's easier to make decisions and you have so much more available to you uh, that you might not have when you're, I guess, straddled uh, with debt. So, so that's uh, it's so refreshing to hear you guys say that, and and uh, that's something that you know we should all strive for. Uh, to, like Tim, like you said, it, just the word freedom, right? Just mm -hmm. freedom from the burden of debt is is just so so important. So. Liberating. Awesome. It's so, yeah, amazing. So the next question, if you had to do this 
all over again, which I don't wish on anybody. Yeah. If you had to do this all over again, would there be anything that you would have done differently when you reflect back, like, you know, kind of lessons learned kind of thing, but was there anything that you maybe would have done differently? Over yeah. the I think for me, I probably um, really just worked even harder. Oh. Yeah, like it's just so, it's always a sweet feeling of success when you accomplish a goal, right? Any goal. And so for us, since the debt had been such a burden on our um, marriage and finances early on, that December 3rd of 2018 was an amazing day. And so if I could have made that any earlier than I would have, I think um, some of the tips and tricks and tools that we learned along the way and the momentum that we gained as we continue to see that debt number go down, if we would have um, had that same feeling of accomplishment kind of at the beginning, instead of starting out with feeling defeat, uh, uh, defeated, obviously, um, that we possibly could have shaved off some more some more time off of that um, right. loan repayment because once you get momentum and you start learning things it just seems to start happening faster and so maybe working pushing even harder from the very beginning would be um the only thing i would probably do differently if for some strange reason we were ever doing this again <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah hopefully not <laughs> Yeah, so Jason, I previously was a perfectionist. Oh. Uh, everything that I did had to not have any loose ends. But looking back on it, I'm just going to say no. There isn't anything oh, that I, I would change because it's a part of, and you mentioned, you know, we spent four years getting out of debt. You're not just going to change and revert back to the behavior you had before. And I think because it took us four years, not wishing a long debt-free journey for anyone, but because it took us four years, the, the skills, the, the attributes of what we call in the debt slayer, uh, our book, uh, willpower, refuse to lose, these different attributes we've attained and have been instilled in us. So we won't revert back to the bad buying behavior or lending behavior that we have depended upon. So I think looking back on it, I would not change anything because it made us better people. That's great. That's really good to hear. Um, but both, both answers were really, uh, I appreciate both answers and I can totally see uh, what, what you're saying there at the end about, you know, it, I, I think in anything in life, it, the hardest thing to do is just to start. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so like you said, you know, you wish you would have worked harder before or at the beginning, but I think it's kind of like anything, like when you guys, I think the hardest thing to do to, to write a book is to start it, right? <laughs> I mean, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so yeah, I mean, you guys, once you, like you said, once you started it, you started building up that momentum. And I was thinking of like the snowball effect, right? You get that snowball is going down the hill and you guys are building up that momentum and, and getting more confidence and, 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 you know, you're, you're realizing, Hey, you know, we can do this, you know, it might, it's going to take some time, but you know, we can do it. So um, that's really, really, uh, really encouraging to hear, hopefully for a lot of people to hear as well. Now, my next question was just kind of a generic question, like what advice would you give to others? But I thought of uh, something a little bit more specific. And I think I maybe have asked this to Tim before in a previous conversation, but um, so, so much of, of financial, health and fitness is related to physical fitness when I think about it. So like in physical fitness, let's say you want to lose 40 pounds. It's like, Hey, you know what? I'm a little overweight. I want to lose 40 pounds. So you go in the gym, you work hard, you get a trainer, you get a gym membership and you, you bust your butt in the gym and, and you've lost 40 pounds. You've worked hard. Let's say you lose 40 pounds in a year, right? The day of the year, you've lost 40 pounds. And like, wow, like I just killed myself. I, you know, dieted and I, I lost all this weight. And I did it. I hit my goal. But the actually the hardest thing is keeping the weight off moving forward for the rest of your life. Right. It just just keeping that 40 pounds. The, the hard work wasn't losing the weight. The hard work is, is maintaining the, the weight. And it's the same thing with money and finances. Like you guys, everyone might think the hardest thing that you guys did was this. The hardest thing that you guys are going to do is to to keep this this zero 
right? So you guys are, are very young, you're relatively young um, a couple. So you have a lot of life left, right? You, you know, maybe expand your family in the future. We'll, you know, we'll see. But so what is, how do you stay out of debt, right? How, how do you keep that, you know, moving forward? What do you guys think about that? Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is sticking to a budget, mm -hmm. creating a budget and sticking to a budget. So that is the, the common denominator that will not change having debt and being debt free. We have a budget that we sit down and talk about every month and we set our line items based off of our, our goals. Uh, secondly, is it gonna be setting financial goals? So part of having a budget is to track and manage obtaining those financial goals. Or they could be personal or physical goals. You wanna free up more money in your budget so you can allocate more money to having better fitness. Mm -hmm. But ultimately you use a budget to track those goals you set. Yeah, I agree. Goals, budgeting um, really play a role in everything because when you are about to make a purchase or considering buying a car, you always revert back to, well, what do I really want in life? And what, what is my financial goals? What are our lifestyle goals? Um, is this is this purchase falling within those things? And then, of course, does it align with our budget? You may have the money, but have you budgeted that money for that specific purchase itself? Um, so definitely setting goals, family goals if you're married, um, or personal goals if you're single, and or both, and um, really setting a budget to make sure you achieve those things so that way you're always consciously and intentionally making purchases and not just spending previously and i'm, I'm going to add a, a yeah. curveball to that as well okay because i just feel like it's applicable to today's day and age is don't believe and follow what you see on social media yeah. um because I personally feel like that's driving a lot of instant gratification behavior. Mm -hmm. And I know because I have been there where I have to have it now, mm -hmm. I want it now, and I'm gonna figure out how to get it now because I, I saw someone else that had it and they made it look very good. And we're kinda, we kinda live in that society where we're driven by what we see, what, what was once on TV, now on social media. Mm -hmm. So I would say, don't believe the hype. A lot of those folks who are flashing those nice cars, mm -hmm. the jewelry is rented, is borrowed. Right. Turn right after the photo. Mm -hmm. um, so don't believe the hype or follow what you see on social media. Believe in your budget and your goals. That's an excellent point, Tim. It just made me think of all the times that, uh, you know, during my single years that I would go out with my friends and uh, to various events and places. And, and we would kind of observe other people. And all my friends were like, man, that guy must be really rich. Look at his car, or look what he's, look at all that jewelry he has. And I just, I kind of like, I, I'm the Mr. Reality. I'm like, no, he's probably just deeply into debt. He's not rich. <laughs> that, that's the reality. You know, I'm probably 95% of the time, it's like, you know what? He's, he's not making a million dollars a year. Yeah. He, he, you know, he, he's, he's in debt like he's in debt up to his eyeballs like so don't be envious of someone like you said it's a mirage Tim like don't be envious of what you see on social media or, or out in real life like someone's driving a car or has a you know big house or or whatever it may be or oh, I just bought my lake house and well how you know what like no I mean anyone could go into debt and get all these things and appear as if they are you know making a lot of money when they're really not they're just you know drowning in debt so those are things that I you know I'm going to try to hopefully teach my my uh my kids when they grow up it's like you know let's you know perception is not reality I guess that's the the, the quote that people always say so that that's a very good point Tim, about social media uh for sure um so last little segment here I just want to take uh a moment and have you guys share about the book writing process. And, and one thing that I really, really liked about this book is that you guys, um, it's in both of your voices, right? So one section, it'll say, you know, Tim is speaking. And then the next chapter, it'll be Leanne telling her story. So, so you actually get both kind of, you get both stories, you get both points of view. 
So that's one unique thing that I really like about the book that I really appreciate that you guys did it because you know, obviously you co-authored it. So, so that was really, really cool. Um, and sh just share a little bit if you have any, um, this was, I believe your first book, right? This is the first book you wrote. So talk about just the whole book writing process. Like, you know, how difficult was it? Uh, how long did it take you? Uh, you know, any, any thoughts on, on the whole, just the book process? For sure, for sure. I'll be honest, writing a book was never on my um, goal list or bucket list or anything. <laughs> the bright idea came from my husband, Tim, here. Okay. And, um, I always say he dragged me into this project, but it actually ended up being very, very rewarding for um, various reasons. I mean, as we talked about before, it was a major part of our marriage for the very first four, first, um, four years of the marriage. Like, as soon as we got married, it kind of hit us immediately. And so um, I guess during the honeymoon or right after the honeymoon, it, so it was immediate um, that that financial burden hit us. And so it was a journey that warranted documentation um, for us. So that was one thing. Also, I really, for me personally, when I go through a lot of battles, I don't really stop and reflect on the growth mm. that has occurred through what has happened. And so this was a great opportunity to just recap everything and really think about what happened, how we grew individually, how we grew together. Um, so that was awesome. And then lastly, really just, I never realized how inspiring our story could be. For me, it was just right. a journey that Tim and I were taking. Um, I didn't even think about it, the fact that it could inspire other people. And since the book launch, we've already gotten lots of great feedback and people that have set goals and some people that have had money sitting around and they've already put it towards the loans just because they were inspired and like, hey, why not? Um, so it's it was definitely not my idea at all, but it ended up, it ended up being great. Um, and we learned a lot about ourselves and uh, in our marriage as well. Awesome. Yeah, and I, I just have to add, although it was my idea, this book would not be possible without Leanne. She <laughs> right. committed herself to the, the joint project and got it done and did a great job. Some of the, the reasons that we, we wrote the book is first, when we, when we initially started out on this journey to become debt-free, we went out to the web and we, we had, you know, followed Dave Ramsey, we had read Susie Foreman, and uh, we had looked around for a lot of different resources, but we could not find a checklist of how to get started, how to get out of debt from start to finish, it's like a checklist to check off from start right. to finish. We looked high and low and we couldn't find it. So we had to piecemeal it together. Throughout the journey, I said, oh, I hope and pray no one has to do what we did again oh. to figure it out over four years. So let's put, let's document it, let's put it in a nice checklist so people can have the game plan for success. And that was one of the primary reasons why we wrote the book. Um, because we, you may not know this, but the book originally started out as like a checklist and it okay. just developed over time. And we felt that maybe our story over the, our four year journey to become debt free would be inspiring. Mm -hmm. So we decided to put that in the book. Mm -hmm. And that's why we sort of have an expedited our story and then we go into some of the tips and then we have a checklist and then we have a journal um, but we wanted to make sure that first you had the checklist the guideline the resources and then hopefully our story inspires you to actually knock out the debt so that's sort of how the book came about in the development and the, the pieces of it um, the process it was pretty pretty tough um, <laughs> it took us about two years oh. in total to complete the book from start to finish. We had a, a toddler born right. right around the time we started, and he kind of grew with the book. When he turned two, that was basically like the two-year mark of working on the book. So, oh, interesting. The yeah. book is the same age as the kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So we, yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. So um, we just had to deal with the life changes that came. Yeah. And, you know, missed of writing the book. But uh, outside of that, we, we really appreciate the process. It wasn't easy, but we were able to finish it and feel good about the product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's uh, uh, one thing I will say, Tim, is, is um, uh, a couple more notes about the book. I, you know, I've gone to the bookstore and looked at all kinds of different personal finance books. And, and, and some of them are just massive, you know, 500 page kind of resource type books. And I will say this is a very easy read. I think it's around 150 pages or so. This is a very easy read. It's not that you can see it's not that, you know, you're not going to spend a year reading this thing. This is uh, to me, like you said, it, it's a debt free book, right? the title, The Debt Slayers. But to me, this is much more than about money or about debt. This is about a lifestyle. This is about a mindset. This is about behavior modification. This is about, like you said, Tim, freedom, independence. There's so much more to this book. And, and it is very encouraging and very inspiring. Uh, and, and I hope, you know, anybody that, that picks this up, it, uh, it, it encourages them. Not just that, you know, you, you might be debt free, but you could still read this book and it will encourage you to maybe start your own business or, or maybe get involved in a nonprofit or, or maybe change jobs and, and follow your passion, right? We've talked about that. Uh, you talk about that a lot in this book about following your dreams and your passion and your goals. So this isn't just about, you know, paying off debt. Of course, that's, you know, the name of the book, but, but there's so much more in this book. And, and I really appreciate you guys writing this book together. And, and I do think that uh, it, it will be tremendously helpful to anybody that reads it. Um, so well, lastly, before we go, Tim or Leanne, uh, let us know where people can, can find this book. And I, I know, you, I think you guys have a website, you know, plug all your stuff. Let us know where, where we can find your website and where, where the book is sold. Sure. So the first place you can find us, which is probably obvious for most people, is on Amazon. We are a self-published book, but we are on Amazon. And also you can find our book on our website, cultivatefl.org, where you can actually purchase autographed copies if you, if you like. In addition, we're in the process of getting our book into a couple of different bookstores. We won't provide them at the moment because okay. of the process. That's great. But we will make sure to send that information to you in the future. Cool. Also make sure to follow us on Instagram at cultivate underscore FL, where you can find and receive weekly tips on how to get out of debt and inspirational quotes, and also find out more updates on what we have in the pipeline. Awesome. And we'll put all the links in the description below. Uh, so if people want to buy your book on Amazon, we'll have all the links there to your website and the Amazon uh, page. For, so anyone wants to check out or buy your book, uh, they, can, they can do it there as well. So Tim, and Leanne Norris, authors of the book, The Debt Slayer. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Uh, and what you heard today is just a small glimpse of what their story, get, get their book, check their whole story is in here, the, the whole journey, uh, $400,000 to zero. What, what an amazing, it, it, it's astonishing. And Tim, I think we, we talked before on the phone about your story and, and I said, Tim, I said, there's going to be people that look at the number and they're just simply not going to believe you. They're, they're not. They're not going to believe because I told you, like, you know, there's people that have $10,000 of student loan debt they've had for 30 years and they haven't made one payment on it. They're going to look at this and say they're they're just not going to believe it. Right. So read the book and you'll find out how they did. it. So <laughs> uh, so thanks so much, guys. And I really appreciate it. And I wish you so much success with the book and, and the website and, and all of your uh, hopefully you your speaking engagements uh, that you guys have done. I know you guys will probably have some more in the future. So thank you so much. Uh, this is Jason Brown saying, don't forget, it's not the amount of money you make, but the margin that matters the most. And we'll see you next time. All awesome. right. Thanks a lot, thank Jason. Thank you.